Well, I picked this little Henry O, so Henry O 16 or 160, up um, a couple of days ago, dirt cheap, no pun intended, because it is dirty. Uh, but this boat was only used for five years, and then it was sitting with a cover over it for the next 20 something years. Um, and hadn't been used in 20, like 25 or 26 years or whatever. So 1991, hadn't really done the math, but you know, it's like 25, 26 years. Um, but it was last registered in 96 and it's a 91 boat. And it was not used the last of, of that 96 from what I was told. Um, anyway, it's a 70 horsepower Evinrude motor. Um, it's not, not locked up or anything. I checked that. Um, so it should run. Uh, of course, I'll take the spark plugs out and, and soak the uh, piston tops, you know, the rings with some oil of some kind, mystery oil or PB blaster or something, you know, for a few days and then blow that out uh, before I put spark plugs back in and, and try to crank it. Um, the, these are nice enough little boats. Um, this one is absolutely filthy. The it still had a cover over it when I got it, but the cover had blown off the back and, and leaves had blown up all in it. And so you can see that it was full of leaves and debris, animals had been nesting in it, birds had been nesting up underneath the tarp. So it is it is a uh, pretty sad looking boat right now, but uh, don't laugh. It'll clean up better than you might think. And, uh, and it'll most likely end up making a pretty good little boat. Um, my father owned one of these boats back when I was a, a teenager, or well, I guess I was older than a teenager, but back when I was, before I was married. And um, I've had, you know, many a good day out fishing with my daddy on a boat just like this. Um, these boats aren't for everybody. Some people think they're really ugly. Some people think they look kind of cute. The, the nice thing about these little Henry O's is, it's about the driest riding boat you'll ever get on. Uh, all the spray is shot back down to the water and you just almost never take on any spray, even in rough water, it's a dry ride. Um, and there's very few boats that are a dry ride in rough water, but this is one of them. I actually used to have a 17 foot version of it, which was a lot wider than this one. Um, and uh, I used it at the coast for a few years. Um, when I got it, it was, both tires were dry rotted and completely, you know, falling off the rims. The rims were down in the dirt and rusted. Uh, so I just took a couple of uh, wheels with me with good ty new tires and, uh, and um, you know, changed those out right on the spot before I brought it home. Um, I, I spun the wheels. Uh, one of the bearings was real smooth and clean. The other one, like the grease was hard in it, but uh, I... Um, cleaned them up and, and pumped them full of fresh grease and got them spinning clean and brought it home about a probably a 40 minute trip and when I got home and checked the bearings they were they were not hot at all so uh, you know it's just got the old grease in the bearings so I'll probably clean those bearings good and put them back together uh, just old grease uh, one other thing uh, of course the strap was dry rotted and falling off so I put a put a line on it there just to hold it in place um, the hitch, the hitch was broken, uh, but the parts were still there. So I took the, uh, and knocked out that, the center, uh, bolt that had, you know, where the lever locks down. And I just replaced it with a temporary bolt and lut, nut and lock washer. And then I just, uh, tightened it up with the, uh, a nut and a lock washer, um, to, to clamp to clamp the, you know, the little wedge that goes underneath here that clamps against the ball. So it was totally safe. It's just not convenient because you had to take a, you know, a wrench to take it loose. But it got me home because when I went to get the boat, I did not know that was broken. And so I didn't have a spare one with me. But the bolt, you know, because I had the parts, you know, under here, the little wedge piece under here and spring and all, um, it was just a matter of temporarily just putting a bolt through it and, and putting a you know, nut and a lock washer up here and getting the proper tension you know, to keep it from coming undone. And then I did put a double safety chain on it just for, for safety. Um, I happened to have a, a bit heavier, a, 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 a 
right good bit heavier chain than this in the back of my truck. I always keep some chains and mess in my truck. And so I put a heavy chain through all the way through here and uh, you know, to my research and, uh, and then bolted that chain together appropriate length uh, just for safety, just in case. But, but had no issues getting it home at all. Um, have no idea if the lights work or anything. I just, I just hooked up to it and came home. Um, and of course you can see there the, the uh, fuel fill. Probably the worst thing about this boat is the location of that fuel fill. It's out of the way, but because it's almost com it's basically completely horizontal, um, it's, it's a little bit awkward to put fuel in it uh, and not spill any, especially if you're trying to put fuel in it from a from, from a jerry can. That's really hard. You have to have a flexible uh, funnel and put it up here. With with um, you know at a pump, it's it's not so bad. But uh, of course, there's the vent, and the tank is built in the floor. I don't remember how many gallons it is. Seems like it's about 40 gallons if I remember right. But there, you know the tank's up under under the floor right there. So I'll pull that out and pressure test it and all that and make sure it's not not leaking anywhere before I put any fuel in it. And then the battery goes underneath that box right there, which is rotten. Um, and um, also the uh, the oil pump, it's got this, this motor is the, I think they call it the VRO or something like that. It's got the oil, you know, the oil pump. Uh, so you don't have to mix, you don't have to mix oil with your fuel. You just use, um, you know, plain gasoline and then it, it mixes the fuel um, as the motor needs it. So, like I say, don't laugh. It, it'll clean up. Uh, all this, all this uh, I guess you call it lichen or something like that, that'll come off pretty easy. Um, a little Clorox and water will, will kill it, and then you can take a pressure washer and just blow it right off, and all that'll come off. And that's, you know, all this stuff here, that, that'll all come off. Um, and it I haven't really seen any damaged areas to speak of anything bad um, other than it is just so, so, so dirty. It's got an aluminum prop on it. Just a little bit of a nick where somebody hit, hit the bottom at some point in time, but it's usable to start with. I'll probably replace that. Probably put a stainless prop on it. Um, but like I said, it's 1991 engine, 1991 boat, 1991 trailer. Got rod holders, rod holders there. You know, the little swivel seats. Um, this boat is a bit narrow, uh, but it's but it's not a bad little boat. Uh, based on, you know, the one that my daddy had that, you know, I used to go out on. It was, uh, uh, we took it, we used to take it to the coast all the time and fish on the inside primarily but on a really good day, we would take it out to the inlet, but usually we just fished on the inside with it and also at the lakes. The gear shifter is not froze up. The steering cable is froze up, although I haven't tried to break it loose yet, uh, but I may have to replace the steering cable. Um, they're prone to getting stuck if they're not used for a while. And this one hasn't been used in, like I say, 25 plus years. Anyway, another another project.